So we've talked about how to use the origin points and the parenting and the empty objects for objects, but we haven't talked about the armatures yet. So armatures are basically what bones make up. So the armature is an object that is full of bones that can be posed and rigged and such like that. So it's different from a normal polygonal object, but actually has a different structure known as bones inside of them. So let's go ahead and show you that. Um, it's very easy to add. We're just going to go ahead and delete this cube real quick and hit Shift A and go to the armature menu. And you can see there's a single bone here that you can add. So this is actually an armature with a single bone in it. And you can actually add more bones and create more bones. You can even extrude bones and subdivide bones. A bunch of different edit mode tools that you've used before on polygonal objects will also be able to be used on these bones as you edit these, just so you guys know. But let me show you exactly how these bones work. Now, every bone has a head and a tail. Actually, I'm going to go into edit mode for this so I can select these individually. So you have a head and a tail. So you can go into edit mode and select the bone, the whole bone, or you can select the head and the tail individually. And these are points that you can manipulate. Um, if you notice here, there's a head and tail option here. Just to get you an idea of which one the head is and which one the tail is, if I move this value, it moves the bottom base point, the pivot point, that's the head. And then the tail is actually the, uh, the, the tail end of it, essentially, the pointy part of it. So the tail is what actually rotates. And I'll show you that in pose mode real quick. In pose mode, you'll see that when you rotate things, the head stays still and the tail moves. So anything that's parented to the tail will then also move. So that's how that rotation works. It's a good indicator of where it's rotating and stuff like that. Now let's go ahead and add some more bones. My favorite way of doing it is simply by extruding. I like extruding bones if you want to create a chain of bones. You can actually select the tail here and just hit E like you would in a polygon object. Uh, and you can see here, it just creates a new bone and it's already connected and parented. You can also use Z, X, Y, whatever, and it will create a new bone there. You can also duplicate bones like so. And you can, if you have the 3D cursor here, you can also hit Shift A, which will automatically add a bone where your 3D cursor is all very viable options. Another way you can do it is if I wanted to create a spine or something like that, I could take this guy. Let's say, if, actually, you know what, let's take this guy, make it really long. You might be like, wow, that's a really big bone. Maybe you don't need a bone that big. Maybe you need to have some segments in there. Well, you can actually just hit W and then subdivide, and that will give you a subdivided bone shape. And of course, you can also up that to a different, however many of, number of cuts you need to do in the T tab after you subdivide. So that's very helpful as well for creating bones and the such. Now, now that we have all these bones, let's go ahead and see how they interact with each other. So this is the base bone that has, basically it's the root of everything. It's called the root bone in a lot of rigs. And you'll notice everything moves with it, except for this guy, which is a separate piece. Let's actually go ahead and parent this. Actually, let's go ahead and parent this to like, let's say the very top one. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control P like I did before. But you have two different options here. You have connected and you have keep offset. Now connected basically moves it so that the head and the tail are connected. If I actually connect that to the parent that I have selected now, that will actually move that bone all the way to the end of the chain, which is not what I want right now. I'm just gonna use keep offset, which allows it to remain disconnected, and you're gonna see a relationship line like you do in the other bone over there. So I'm gonna use keep offset, and you can see that relationship line there, just like this one. And I'm gonna go ahead and go back into pose mode by hitting tab, and as you can see here, it parents everything now. Uh, and then I'm going to move this guy, see what happens there. So now this guy doesn't get moved because this guy is parented only to this guy, but not to this guy. So this guy, when he's moving, he, they're actually siblings. So he doesn't, siblings, they don't care what the, the other sibling does. They just, they do whatever they want. They only care about what the parent does. So this is the sibling of that guy. So he doesn't do anything. And uh, of course, these will just continue moving. As you can see here, everything down the chain is getting affected up until the very end. And that's how the hierarchy works. So with that, you understand a lot of things already. The origin point of these bones is just the head of these bones, the head, the base point of these bones. That is going to be the origin point of every single one of these rotations. So if you have an object parented to this bone, that's essentially changing the origin point to the base or the head of the bone that it's parented to. And so if I go ahead and show you a little bit more about parenting real quick and create this cube, and I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller so we can see it. And I'm gonna parent this cube just right onto this uh, onto this bone here. 
And I can actually do that, just parent it directly to the bone, by going into pose mode while still having that cube selected. Using shift select to select the armature, going into pose mode, and then you have, of course, the control P option, but now you have this extra option here, along with armature to form, which we'll get into later. But you have this bone option that allows you to just parent it to the bone itself, not the object or the armature, but the bone, which will then, if I go ahead and make sure that this is not selected, so you believe me, um, that I'm not manipulating that directly but I go ahead and select this you'll see that the uh, the origin point is now here now the origin point of the object is over here so you've effectively changed the origin point to the base of the bone just by parenting it to the bone itself so that's a good way to use parenting in object rigging which where you can get away with just parenting objects to the bones the armature deform setting is mostly I'm going to go ahead and show you that again uh, if I hit control P the armature deform setting this is mostly for character rigging which we're going to get into so character rigging is a lot more organic you're going to need to use some more intricate weight maps so this will be a lot more complex we'll get into that later now on top of all of that there's of course bones that have now their own property menu so as you can see here under there's next to the armature there's a bones menu now and this bone menu has a bunch of different things including uh, whether or not to actually deform in the armature deform settings and uh, transform locks just like an object would have rotation order etc etc these are very important settings one of them that I really like is the inherit rotation versus inherit scale and local location these properties actually matter quite a bit if I went ahead and unchecked any of these you'll notice for example this affects how the parenting works which gives you another example of how it can be used so I went ahead and unchecked inherit rotation which means that when I rotate the, its parent which is this one you'll notice that even though it's changing the location of the object of the bone I should say the bone is not rotating it bone is actually maintaining it the same world rotation which is actually very helpful for a lot of different rigs for example if you had a ferris wheel you know now this kind of looks like a ferris wheel with the the different carts and stuff like that always pointing upwards to make sure that people don't fall out of it so <laughs> this is a very cool use of the rig and um, there's a very handy property right here just uncheck inherit rotation you can also do inherit scale so you can of course scale this up but if you notice when I scale this up everything above it you know I should say uh, below it in the hierarchy uh, scales up as well whereas this guy when uh, when when you do that it should be the same size as the others but you can see it doesn't actually get bigger it just stays the same size it almost looks like it's getting smaller because it's getting further away but that's actually it's just staying the same size so there's a couple properties there that you can play around with now just to remind you pose mode is actually where you do all the animation so most of the time you will not be animating armatures in object mode because you can only move the object as a whole you can't actually move individual bones and in edit mode, you certainly can't animate anything because none of this actually gets saved. So this would just be the changes of the actual object and origin points and stuff like that. So if you want to actually animate anything, you have to use the pose mode. But yeah, that's it for the overview for the armature object in Blender.